Welcome back. Well, we were just talking about Fiesta, and I know a lot of people fall down during Fiesta because you're in those crowds of people and they're wearing all those crazy shoes. I am certainly one of those. Um, so this morning we are talking about a wonderful new procedure. It's an ankle replacement surgery that um, is new to San Antonio. Dr. Marvin Brown is one of the only doctors, one of two doctors in San Antonio performing this procedure. He is with the San Antonio Orthopedic Group. He is also by chance my orthopedic and I'm happy to say I have not seen him in at least five or six years. It's a good thing, right? That's a great thing. <laughs> yes, and then Betty Doobie, she's a patient. She has actually had the surgery, so she can talk a little bit about how her recovery has been. And so, Dr. Brown, just since we were kind of talking about this in the commercial break, let's just quickly visit the shoe issue, especially since we're in Fiesta and, you know, you got all those big wedges going on. Mm -hmm. Great. Can I give my phone number? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, because they're going to be calling you after all of this, right? So it, put, it puts your foot in an abnormal position. It crowds your toes, which leads to deformities like bunions and hammer toes. Uh, you can fall off of them and break your ankle. Right, right. Um, but they're so pretty. Of course they are. <laughs> <laughs> I and used to think that's that. How you stay in, that's how you stay in business from all of us, like myself and like Betty. But Betty, tell us what happened with you. You're on vacation. Oh, my goodness, yes. We were in Jamaica. And I was all dressed up, all ready to go to dinner, and thought I looked so cute in my little wedgies. And I had a long, long dress, and I went downstairs. My husband was upstairs, and I came out of the restroom. And I mean that I didn't see it, and I just, and that's, I was down, and I was, so I, it, it's taken me, I guess, two and a half years to get over it. Well, because Betty had, I guess, sort of the basic surgery that a lot of people have, which would be just a what, when you hurt your ankle so, like that? Put the bones back into place mm -hmm. with and like then screws hold them there with plates uh -huh. and screws. Okay. A doctor there did it. And that's scary. But that, that was the only doctor on the whole island and he was, he was uh, you know, just by himself. And so it was, it was scary, but we thought, it, he said, if I had to have it, you know, so. And so for a year, you know, you had that surgery, then you started physical therapy. It didn't work. And then that's when work. you went to Dr. Brown. Uh -huh. Okay. That's right. And what did you determine? That she had developed arthritis from the fracture, which is common. Um, ankles are not like knees and hips. Knees and hips, the most common thing is osteoarthritis or degenerative arthritis, which is the arthritis of aging. And the ankle seems to be protected from that. And so most of what we see with ankle arthritis starts as an injury. And that was true in her case. Mm -hmm. And so early on we do things like um, injections, bracing, maybe we do some physical therapy, a cane, things like that to help the ankle see if it can stabilize a little bit before we have to go in for a large surgery like this. Traditionally, when we got to the point where the easy things weren't working, we would do an ankle fusion. And the problem with an ankle fusion is you lose your motion with the ankle fusion. And when that happens, you start putting more force through other joints, and that tends to wear other joints out in the foot. And so you find that you're coming back in five years to fuse the next joint down, and then another three or four years to fuse more joints down in the foot. And so ankle fusions, though they're a good operation for pain, and in fact they're as good an operation for pain as a joint replacement, you lose your motion. So you mean you couldn't do your foot like this or like this? Mm -hmm. Up and do down. That. You could just do up and down, that's it? No, you could not no. with an ankle fusion. The so ankle you moves your foot up and down. Oh, no, the next horrible. joint down yeah. moves it in and out. Yeah. Oh, wow. And I can do both. I mean, I can do anything with my And that's with now. the end bone. So what is the end bone? The end bone is a prosthesis that's manufactured by a company named Wright Medical. And what's unique about the end bone is that they use the center of the tibia to align the prosthesis. And the reason that I became interested in using the end bone is because of that, because with hip replacements, they became uh, viable years and years ago because they figured out they had to line it off the long axis of the femur. Knee joint replacements, shoulder joint replacements are aligned to the long axis of the bone that works them. And so that's what made sense with me first. And I became trained how to do these. And I've been doing in bones for about eight years. And the in-bone prosthesis along with three other prostheses are called second generation. Uh, all of the second generation prostheses seem to work very well. Um, 
And when you say second generation, you just mean that they've come out with a newer model. Right. Okay. The first generation was one single prosthesis, and it was called the Agility, and it was developed by an orthopedic surgeon in South Dakota who had a dream that we didn't have to fuse ankles. And so he spent his entire life developing that prosthesis. Wow. And so this, it's just, so Betty, this is what's inside your uh -huh. ankle right now. So uh -huh. you can't see anything externally. Can't feel it, no. <laughs> and you can't even feel it. Mm -mm, mm -mm. So do you feel back to normal again? I'd say 98%, yeah. And you Absolutely. can move your foot? Oh, I can move it anyway. And I can walk and I can do the elliptical and I can, I have a trainer that I work out at the gym all the time. And oh yeah, I can do anything now. And what was the recovery like? Well, the recovery, if you don't do, ex he's very strict. If <laughs> yes, you don't I remember. Do exactly what I remember, doctor, yes. Thank goodness he was. But if you don't do exactly what he says, you, I don't think you can recover. He, my, my first instructions were when he took, the, when took my um, cast off, he said, okay, I want you to go six days a week to a warm pool, swim for an hour, and that meant kicking, you know, on a thing, kicking on your stomach for 30 and on your back for 30 and you do that you know for six weeks every day wow and I did it and then when I finished that then he put me in physical therapy and I, I did that three days a week but then they gave me exercises to do at home twice a day and I never never missed I so I really did everything they said and you were and I threw all my heels away and, and, no, I, you and threw I'm your still heels crying okay. and even my wedgies Oh, and your wedges. Oh, <laughs> I know. I did. I, well, I, Dr. Brown told me I tore a few tendons in my foot, and he said, well, you need to lay off your foot and do this, that, and the other. And I was like, okay, I know how I am, and there's no way. And he said, then we're going to put a cast on your leg. I remember that. That's he right. said, then cast it up because you cannot move that leg. That's right. But it worked. It, it did healed. work. Yes, right. That's so I just let me ask you this. Mm -hmm. If somebody, let's say, breaks their ankle, can they go straight to this option, or do you have to go through the other do you prefer to go well, through you, the other protocol? Well, you want to go through the other first. The other's almost always successful. Okay. So this is more of if it's a little bit more arthritic or maybe more of a severe ankle the, break or? No, this, this is a prosthesis to deal with arthritis in the ankle joint. Okay. So it's specifically arthritis. So it's not like I can say, hey, I broke my ankle and I want, I want the, the big kahuna. Let's just get it over with. And I know I don't have mm -hmm. to deal with anything the rest. Okay. No. Gotcha. You have to have developed that, some sort right. of arthritis around mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. And then will Betty ever have to have it replaced or? There's a, there's a piece of plastic. In fact, you can see, see the white plastic. Okay. Yeah, we'll turn it. Okay. I see right here. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's a spacer and it sits between the metal parts. So what you do is you wear out that plastic over time. And as a matter of fact, the very first ankle joint replacement that I did about 15 years ago, six months ago, had the plastic replaced. Wow. So 15, 15 years. That's good. good. That gives, that's good. I'm glad. And the plastic, I'm sure, is made a little bit sturdier today. The plastic today is better. And, and the manufacturers of prostheses have done the things that they need to do to improve the plastic. So if the plastic's too brittle, it's going to break and it's going to wear too quickly. Um, there's a lot of chemical properties of the plastic that are protected now that weren't always protected in the past that lead to oxidation of the plastic and things like that. And so it's a, it's a great time to practice orthopedic surgery. Yeah, no kidding. I know it's incredible with well, the progress that's been made. This is fantastic. And so, Betty, you said you, you don't feel anything. I, no, I don't feel anything. And what about when it gets really cold outside? I've always wondered that people who have no. pins, plates, you know, prosthesis, no. whatever, nothing? No, I don't have any, I'm not having any pain, no. no. Wow. And I can, at first, when I first started walking, you know, it, would, it, it bothered me a little bit. I mean, like when we were going to the ball game, say, I couldn't, I, we didn't do it for a while because I couldn't walk that far. But now, you know, we, we do everything, so. And why do you think, since InBone has been around for about eight years, why don't more orthopedics use it? Well, first of all, there's not a lot of orthopedic surgeons that do just lower leg, foot, and ankle. Okay. And it's a complicated procedure. She didn't have any problems with her foot that had to be corrected. But say you came in with a flat foot, I'd have to fix the flat foot mm -hmm. first mm -hmm. and then do the prosthesis because you have to have a stable platform to put it on. Wow, I never I thought about that. I didn't realize that. I'm glad it was all right. If there's, if there's yeah. deformity or instability, it 
causes the prosthesis to fail early. Wow. Okay, so where would you like people to go to research this or get in touch with you? What's the best way? You can reach me at my office here in San Antonio. Yes, but call quickly, right? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> He's a popular orthopedic. I do know that as well. So, and then also, you have a web address? We do. It's tsaog.com. TSAOG.com. And again, this is the In Bone Procedure, I N B O N E. Betty, I'm so glad that you're back to normal again, thank you. even me though too. it does make me sad. And you can't I'm glad you're back issues. to normal as yes. well. Well, thank you. I, I told him he's my favorite, favorite doctor. <laughs> but just like myself, you don't want to see him again, right? That's it. That's <laughs> no. it. I don't want to fall down, do anything no, like that. I don't that. want to do that again. Thank you so much, Dr. Brown. Nice to see you again. Betty. Thank you. Best of luck. Okay, coming up next, we have a look at your community calendar.